Now, pockets of anti-racism protests in a few African countries have followed sweeping demonstrations in the United States and Europe after the police killing of George Floyd. But in contrast to the thousands taking to the streets elsewhere, solidarity events in Africa have been smaller, often led by left-wing movements. Here's a report. As anti-racism demonstrations sweep the globe following the death of unarmed black man George Floyd in police custody in the U.S., a more muted response took place in Africa, with small-scale protests held across the continent. Anti-racism protesters in Ghana's capital, Accra, held a vigil for George Floyd. The initially peaceful gathering held by the Economic Fighters League, a radical pan-Africanist movement in Ghana, turned into a protest after the arrest of the group's leader. No justice! No justice! We are all black people, we are all African people, and we're just demanding respect, unity, justice, equality, equity, everything. We are done being quiet. Residents of a Nairobi slum also took to the streets to demonstrate against police brutality. According to Kenya's Independent Policing Oversight Authority, police have played some part in the killing of 15 people since the country put a nighttime curfew in place to combat coronavirus. In South Africa, nearly 200 supporters of the far-left Economic Freedom Fighters Party rallied in front of the U.S. Embassy in Pretoria, chanting, down with racism and down with Donald Trump. Down with racism, down. Down with racism, down. And in Senegal, around 50 people took a knee in front of the Gore Slave Trade Memorial in Dakar. It is unacceptable because it is racist. It is unacceptable because it is unfair. If he died for that, he died for us. That means we're all George Floyd. Meanwhile, outside of Africa, protesters have defaced statues of colonialist leaders who were involved in slavery, in some cases leading to the removal of the monuments altogether. The Belgian port city of Antwerp took down a statue of King Leopold II, known for his brutal rule over what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. Millions of Congolese died or were maimed working in rubber plantations and in military expeditions while Leopold amassed a huge personal fortune. Authorities removed the statue days after anti-racism protesters covered it with paint. A petition has begun in Brussels calling for other monuments to also be removed. A researcher at the country's African Museum makes the case for education and change beyond debates about statues. Things have to change, but via people. It is not enough to destroy the statues of Leopold II, even if destroying them is a violent example. But for me, using explanations, understanding, through writing, that is necessary. While some of the statues have come down in Belgium, in Kinshasa itself, King Leopold II is still standing. Here, too, many people feel a need for an increase in education on past injustices. I think that the real story must be told in schools and universities so that everyone knows what really happened during slavery and colonization in Africa in general. The ramifications of the death of George Floyd look set to continue raising questions about both our history and how to navigate our future.